Hello guys, welcome to Filament Daily. This will be untypically longer video on this channel because we will talk about long form. By the way, sorry for my voice, I have a bit of a flu, but I hope you don't mind. So this is the tweet I posted a few weeks ago with a long form example from Upwork job and asked you, will you be interested in me creating that in filament? And of course, the answer was yes. More than 200 likes means something. And the original description is indeed from Upwork. This is how it looks. Refactor legacy coding to Laravel with filament and one of the description details is employee listing with profile and the fields listed here with also screenshot of the form attached. So this screenshot, as I understand, it's from existing system, not even in PHP or Laravel, or maybe even not their own system, maybe some external. And in this video, I will try to recreate that in Filament. In fact, we already did with the team and on our filamentexamples.com, we posted two new projects among others. One project is called large employee form with sections and another version of the same form in a different project with tabs. I will link both of those in the description below and you may purchase filament examples. But in this video, I will discuss this one section version of the form and I will discuss a lot of fields and a lot of interesting solutions for separate fields along the way. So let's begin. Let's start with a database structure. It was kind of a mix between the text description from a client and the screenshot because as clients go often, there were mismatches and I had to improvise what field to represent with which column type, but I ended up with this. So there's migration for employees table. There's personal information with enum of gender, contact information, almost all of them strings, then employment information with store ID and position ID of employment, also enum for status, bank information, deduction information, and also citizenship and taxes. So quite a big table in itself. Now let's go to the employee resource of filament. Here we have the form and let's dissect it step by step. First, how to divide the form into such sections. It's pretty easy. So you have schema and you have section make with personal information becoming a header here. And that's it inside. You just list the schema fields for that specific section, then another section with the same thing and so on. The next question is how to make those labels in line on the left side for all the columns, for all the fields. Of course, you can do that for every input, like for example, text input, and then go in line label like this but you can also do it globally. In the app service provider of Laravel, you can configure a lot of things. For example, text input, inline label, radio, select, and date pickers. So for example, if we remove that one and refresh the form, we have this. As you can see, by default in filament, labels are on top. And also with sections, I forgot to mention this one. Configure that sections would be in columns and compact. For you to understand the difference, let's refresh. And here's the section by default as it was without columns. So with compact columns, we have columns in each section. And also compact means taking a bit less space. As we have a huge form here, it's very important to save vertical space. That's why we have inline and compact with columns. The next part is specific field social security number with these zeros. So if you need a specific format for some input, and I already see the mismatch here, you have mask and you have placeholder. So mask is a validation rule and placeholder is just information. So it should be this. So you can use that for, for example, social security numbers, phone numbers, or something like that. The next field I want to discuss is this radio status with active, inactive, and new options, which are also in line. But differently from inline label for input fields, radio component of filament has a separate method called inline for options. If we don't do that, for example, let's remove and refresh, then the options are vertically listed one under another. So this is how you make radio options in line. The next thing I want to talk about is this EFT information section with that blank column on the right side, how to achieve that. And this was a bit of a hack by my colleague Nerius, how to actually achieve it. Maybe you will have a different solution than shoot in the comments below. So in the original job description in the screenshot, it was this, so blank cell. 
Of course, you can do column span full for the bank, but then by default, the input becomes full width, which is not exactly what we need here. So look at the potential solution, one of the ways. You make a grid with text input and basically that's it. So this line then becomes a grid with, well, one column, one input, but the right hand side isn't filled. We implemented a similar thing in a few more cases of this form. For example, see vision here for deduction. If we go to the deduction section, we have grid make again, schema, but also column start two, which means that the column one isn't utilized, isn't used, and only this right hand side is used. Again, this is one of the potential options. Similarly, text credit survey is one input in the row, although the whole section is with columns. So if we go there to tax filing status, we have grid for that tax credit survey. So yeah, if you have columns, but you want to override those columns and have one line for each input grid is one of the ways the next interesting challenge was this part of citizenship with radio buttons and date pickers related to some of the values we kind of have a solution but it may be not ideal so we can again discuss in the comments first i will show you visually this is the example this is the solution so citizenship radio buttons and then two of them related to dates but as you can see it's not perfectly aligned. We didn't come up with anything else. Maybe you have a different solution. Let me know. But we have a group of radio buttons with label that is in line by global setting, as you remember. This is column span three. And then another group for date pickers with extra CSS attributes and column span seven. We experimented with various values, but this is what we end up with. So kind of the overall tip here is to have extra attributes with Tailwind classes if you need to override something with default component positions. Also two things to point out here is required if. So not sure if you're aware that there is a validation rule not just required but required if another field equals to certain value which means that those two date pickers would be required validated only if this is chosen or this option and also hidden label if we don't do hidden label for example we would have something like this so if you want just the field without the label there's a quick way to do that with hidden label so yeah basically these are all main things that i wanted to show you other fields more or less repeat the same behavior what do you think would you have done any of those differently again let's discuss in the comments below and if you want the source of that form again you can go to filamentexamples.com and actually since those examples were already published a few more because i was recovering from flu so my plan was to shoot this video kind of a week earlier or so but those are the ones that you're interested in form with section and form with tabs that looks like this so split the form not in sections vertically but maybe it is better for bigger forms to have tabs as you can see in the video on the right hand side and if you have any ideas or forms or tables or jobs from upwork or elsewhere that could be recreated as a filament example let me know in the comments below or shoot me an email povilas at laravelldaily.com and maybe you will see that idea implemented on this YouTube channel in the future. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.